Today, we want to show you um, how to carry out an insulation resistance test. This is a dead test, uh, which means that it should not be carried out on a live in uh, a live installation. Um, and to carry out um, an uh, insulation resistance test or an IR test, as some people would call it, we need an insulation resistance tester. Now, um, uh, an insulation resistance tester is going to um, send 500 volts through our installation to check that the insulation of our conductors is are not shorted out on any bits of metalwork or are not touching and, and, and shorting out. And this, this test also will um, help you to find out if you've actually wired it correctly. Sometimes we've put cables in the wrong place and we will come up with a short circuit. Now, um, first thing we need to do with our meter is again, um, we need to put it on the correct setting. Now, uh, the setting for uh, insulation resistance on this fluke meter is right here where it says insulation. Now, um, unlike um, when we're doing continuity, we still are measuring in ohms, but um, insulation resistance testing measures in what we call mega ohms. That's million millions of ohms, where as uh, continuity, uh, we, we're just measuring in, in ohms. Um, the required uh, amount of uh, ohms that we really should be getting on our uh, test here, now this meter actually will go up to 550 meg ohms. I'm expecting to be getting 550 meg ohms. That's the top. That's the top reading there. That and that is 550 million ohms. That's a lot of resistance, um, and and that means current can't flow with that type of resistance. Um, the regulations actually state that I can actually um, in testing an, an installation that uh, if I have a test reading at 500 volts of uh, a minimum of one meg ohm, that's one million ohms, then that's still acceptable. But the regulations do state that if you do this test and you find that your installation or the circuit that you're testing is below two meg ohms, then you would need to uh, obviously note that down on your schedule of results and consult with the client and let them know that uh, something is wrong and they will need uh, further investigation to sort that out. Now, as like with any tester, we just want to make sure that the tester is okay. And so it's always standard practice to test your tester. Now I'm going to make a circuit here. I've already set my meter to the correct settings. Um, um, and I should know what I'm going, what meter reading I'm going to get here. I should be getting zero, zero, zero. So I'm going to press my tester. And here we go, zero, 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 because I've created a short circuit. Um, Second test I'm going to do is what we call an open circuit. And this, this, the open circuit is really what I'm looking for when I'm testing um, my, my insulation resistance test. If I'm getting a closed circuit, which is a short circuit, that means something's wrong. I'm going to need to do some further investigation. And so this is an open circuit. You see, I'm not connecting them together. I'm expecting my meter now to read its highest amount. And so right there, it's reading 500 meg ohms. Sometimes it, uh, these go up to 550, but this fluke here, 500 meg ohms, absolutely great. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this meter is ready to be used. Now, in order for me to carry out an insulation resistance test on a circuit, 
again, we have to observe um, that the circuit has to be dead. Um, again, with our consumer unit, there may be live circuits in here. And if that is the case, we need to be observing our safe isolation protocols in order for us to carry out this test uh, in the safest possible way. Now, in order for me to do this test, I am going to um, release the circuit cables from their relevant bars. Now, this is a lighting circuit, okay? We obviously know that this is the line, the blue is the neutral, and the green and yellow is the earth. Now, what I want to do on an insulation resistance test is, it, it, you can see, this is, it, it's only a small board, but the cables are running everywhere within this lighting circuit. They're touching. Um, I can't physically see if um, any of the cable insulation has been cut away so that it's, it's left some copper um, on one side and, and maybe the cables are, are, are touching like this. Remember, we're not energizing this yet because it's got to pass our dead tests. And so I need to find out uh, via my insulation resistance test that the cable insulation is not cut, but it's solid, it's in one piece, just like this, all the way through the circuit. And I need to find that out for my line, my neutral, and my CPC. In order for us to do that, we're gonna send 500 volts through the circuit. Now there's a number of combinations that you can do this in, um, a number of ways you can do this in, uh, and I'm sure you'll adapt a way that suits you um, as you carry this out. Now, what I like to do is join two together. So I'm gonna join my uh, CPC and my neutral together. Now, I'm gonna make sure it's joined together there. And then what I'm gonna do is have my line single. Now, my tester is gonna send 500 volts through here, through the line, and it's gonna run through all of the circuit. Now if any of my cables, if any of the insulation on my cables have been cut away so that the copper is, is uh, showing and they're touching, um, what that's gonna do is create a circuit. It's gonna create a short circuit. And my meter will, uh, again, if I get a short circuit, I know I will be uh, looking for a reading of 000, 000, 0, 0.00. 0. Um, that's not the reading I'm looking for. I am uh, doing an insulation resistance test and I'm looking for the reading to be 500 meg ohms. And what 500 meg ohms tells me is that I'm sending a current through here, it's going all the way around, but it's not coming back through the neutral, it's not coming back through the CPC, which means I'm not making contact with any other cable, which must mean that my cable insulation is intact. So I'm gonna carry this test out now. I'm gonna press my test button. And between line and neutral and CPC, I have got 500 meg ohms. That is absolutely great. But as you know, um, as you can see, I've tested between my line, my neutral, and my CPC, but I haven't tested between my neutral and my CPC. So I wanna do that combination. And once I've done that combination, then I've done all the combinations that I need to do. And uh, as long as I get the, the correct results, I can fill in on my uh, schedule of test results um, 500 meg ohms and that's absolutely uh, correct and that's what, I, that's what I'll be after. So now I'm going to separate my line and, sorry, separate my neutral 
and my CPC. And I'm gonna do that same test again. Remember, it's always good to um, know what type of figures you're expecting on your meter. Um, and that way, um, if you get uh, a, an unexpected meter reading, you'll, you'll be you'll be aware of what the problem is. And, and so, so here again, I'm expecting to get another 500 meg ohms here because I'm expecting there to be no short circuits. I'm expecting the insulation of these conductors to be fine. So I'm gonna do that test again. And that's absolutely great. That's given me another 500 meg ohms between my neutral and my CPC conductor. Now, um, as far as I'm concerned, the test on this circuit, this lighting circuit, the insulation resistance test is absolutely great. Remember that um, in a real life situation, you won't just be having one circuit, you may have eight circuits that you'll need to individually do these, these, these same tests with. Okay, thank you.